Hello everyone and welcome back to this next lecture. So in the previous lecture we had created the circuit, circuit schematics for the full bridge module connected to the RL load and this time just for a change we had broken up the circuit into two parts that is one with the converter module only and another circuit schematic only for the RL load. Right? And not only that, we had also looked at another way to edit circuit parameters. Instead of using the web browser and clicking on each and every edit parameter button, you can just export all the parameters to an Excel sheet, edit it there in one spot, in one file, and then upload it back into this circuit, circuit simulator. Again, which way you choose is totally up to you. There are some who do not like to deal with spreadsheets, who would rather use the edit parameter button. There are some who would hate using this these buttons and clicking on them individually and would rather just edit all the parameters in one place. Whichever is your liking, please do so. All right? Now, let's go back to the previous page and let us go to Edit Control. Now, in Edit Control, this full bridge converter is very similar, at least in this application, is very similar to the edge bridge DC to AC inverter, converter right or the inverter how you want to call it of course we have two more devices and we'll add them manually but we can start with the base control algorithm for the half bridge module dc to ac converter so let's do that so i'll go over to my file browser actually i'll go to the previous section that is two device examples and i'll go to dc to ac converter and here let me pick out pwm and pwm descriptor.py. So let me go back to full bridge directory and bipolar modulation and paste them both here. Right? Now whenever you copy a pwm.py file, it is always recommended that you copy the descriptor file as well. Right? So that at least you can populate all the control variables that go along with this pwm.py file. Right? And then you can modify them as you need to. So let's go back and this time make sure you're in the correct directory and then choose pwm.py file. Okay, I'll just add simple text here saying pwm. Go ahead to add anything. You can add any descriptor you want. And let's go to configure control and let's upload the descriptor file. And now we have these variables. So we have the device S1 and S2, which is what was there in the half bridge module. We have this static variable that is carrier slope and carrier waveform. This was essential to create the triangular waveform. The sawtooth waveform was what was created in the DC to DC examples. In the DC to AC example, we need a triangular waveform and that is what this is. And finally, of course, we have the time event variable and the PWM carrier waveform, right? So let's go over to our code editor and start editing these values. So the first thing, these are just some warnings. All right, so first thing is let us close these because these are from the previous simulation and I will collapse this previous directory and open out the new directory which is full bridge. And let us open out the pwm.py file and let's collapse this file browser again. So pulse with modulation example for DC to AC converter, but this time I'm going to call this using a full bridge module. Actually, let us use another comment because this command is getting too long, using a full bridge converter with bipolar modulation. Right? Now, the inputs remain the same. Sampling time interval for me is the same because I'm still going to go with the 5000 Hertz frequency. As I said before, if you want to choose something like 25,000 Hertz, Please decrease this to maybe e raised to minus 7, 1 e raised to minus 7, or even e raised to minus 8. You will have to try it out yourself. Until you get a stable simulation, keep decreasing your sampling time interval as well as your integration time step in the simulation parameters. Please don't forget this. Right? So this is exactly the same. Nothing has changed because we've already verified this. Let's not, let's not go and play around with it again. The AC system, I've defined a 60 hertz frequency. Feel free to change it to 50 hertz. And this is merely an initialization of the carrier slope, right? We talked about it in the previous section. And this is the generation of the carrier wave triangular waveform. 
exactly the same, nothing has changed. The modulation signal is also a cosine wave, we have limited it to 0.98 just to make sure that there is no saturation. Now here comes our modular modulation carrier comparison. Let's go back here to our circuit simulator and our slide and see what we need to do. We are interested in these two rows. Alright, so which means that the first case we will be setting the states of four devices, all four devices simultaneously. Alright, in the later section I will talk about how we can break this up and actually set two at a time. That will come later, please wait for a few more lectures. In this next row again for a particular condition we will be setting the states of all four controllable devices. Right, so now the question is what will those states be? Now let's go back and have a look. In the first state which is device S1 and S4 are both conducting, the output is plus VDC and the current is increasing. Right? Now we've already seen that this happens when the modulation signal is greater than the carrier waveform. Right? This is something that we've established several times in the previous lectures. Please go and verify it again. So all we have to do here is we have to code that. That is if the modulation signal is greater than the carrier waveform, let us copy this and add two more lines because we have to set the device, set the conduction state of four devices. So it is going to be S1, S2, S3 and S4. Now come back, have a look again, verify for yourself what we want to do. The first state, S1 is on, S4 is off, S4 is on, all others are off. Let's come over here. S1 is on, S4 is on and the others are off. So we shall turn this off. All right, so this is the state where a plus VDC voltage is produced by the full bridge module, right? And in the positive half cycle, this will result in the current increasing, right? In the negative half cycle, devices S1 and S4 cannot conduct, right? Go back and have a look. In this case, device, this is the positive half cycle. This will cause the current to increase. In this case, that is the same case here, look at this, this is a negative half cycle. If I turn on device S1 and S4, it is no use, the current cannot flow through it in the reverse direction. The current flows through the diode D1 and D4, right? But whatever happens, we are still turning on devices S1 and S4. That logic still happens, it's just that it is no use. Let's come over here and leave it as it is, right? If you want, you can write the comment, like for example, actually we can write the comment because it's nice to know that positive half cycle, sorry, positive half cycle, output plus VDC, output plus VDC. Actually the output is always VDC, but our current will increase, increases. In both cases the output is plus VDC, except that in the positive half cycle that plus VDC results in an increase in current. In the negative half cycle, the plus VDC results in a decrease in the current. All right, and we can just say the next line, negative half cycle, current decreases, right? Now, for the next one, let's come over here again. This is the next second row that we are implementing. S2 is on, S3 is on, S1 and S4 are off. So let's come over here. Let's just copy this first. Actually, let's copy this because the comments are also there. Then we can just edit the comments. All right. So again, come over here, verify. Take your time, verify as much as possible and then write your code. So S2 and S3 are on, S1 and S4 are off. Let's come over here. S2 and S3 are on, S1 and S4 are off, alright? So in the positive half cycle, the current will decrease. Why? Because this produces a minus VDC voltage, right? In the negative half cycle, the current increases because we are producing a minus VDC voltage in the negative half cycle which will result in the current increasing in magnitude but in the negative sense, right? Now, remember this is not done. We have only defined these two output signals S1 and S2, right? We have to now create two more 
output variables. That is, we have to now link these gate variables to the other two devices, S3 and S4. So let's go and add them. So I'm going to add the first one, which would be S3. Initial value can be 0. Let's go over. We've already defined the variable. So let's go and copy this. Come back here and paste it. Right. This is always a good idea so that there's no typo and suddenly you realize that something's not working because there was a silly typo mistake. Right. So let's come over here. Add the last one. Switch S4. Initial value can be 0. And let's come back here. Copy S4 gate. Go back to the circuit simulator and paste it here. That is the desired variable name and control code. So we will save this output. I don't see any other variable change, any other changes that need to be made. If you want to plot the gate signals, by all means do so. You can add variable storage elements. I will leave this to you as an exercise. Since we made changes, let's go export it. Right? We have exported it. So with this, we are now done with our control code. Let's go back to the main page. And we are now ready to run our simulation. Go to view output and click on run. It says the simulation is running, but like I said, always go to the command line and check if there is an error. This is especially the case when you have control code, right? One small mistake in the control code, even if it is a small syntax error, and that will break your simulation, right? So it will not run. So with this, we are now having a working simulation. Again, I'm going to stop this lecture here because in the next lecture, we're going to do quite a bit of analysis. So let us break this lecture and let's start in the another lecture to look at some waveforms. So again, I hope you've been following along with me. If you got any error, like in the command line or somewhere else, please post in the Q&A forum and I'll be happy to help you. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much and see you soon. Goodbye for now.